Oh. Yes, people. Yes, people. Yes, people. It's episode nine of the We Talk Football podcast and episode two in our mini Movember series where we focus on mental health and the darker aspects of football that we don't always hear about. Today, I'm in the Apentain household, a place that's full of nostalgia for me, about 20 years of it, and my co-host grew up here. I'm going to let Kwaku introduce our guest today. Yeah, I don't think I need much introduced then. Obviously, like Jamie touched on, we all, uh, we all grew up in this household. Games of Monopoly over there, fights in the garage. Like, this is a household that we all know well. Um, over on my far right is Kojo, my actual blood brother. And next to me here, Julian. Um, both people who uh, play football at a very, very high level for a while. And me and Jamie thought it would be a good, like, opportunity to get them in. Obviously, we've had episode one of the November or Movember miniseries. We thought it would be a good time to get people that actually got inside into the professional game and hear what they have to say. So, cheers for us, boys. Welcome. The best place to start, I'd say, is going early days. Early days. What What were your first like impressions of football? Where did you start? I'll take that. To be fair, for me, I'd say like growing up where I grew up. Um, if anyone knows like Essex or my part of Essex where I grew up, there's loads of like little parks and little places where you can play. Like back in the day, we had we had a park that wasn't even wasn't even a park. It was a basketball court. Yeah. Yeah. And we made it out to this. We just made two goals out of the swings. The swings. Yeah. Remember, bro? The, the green swing. gate. Remember the green gate. gate. Yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah. That was a goal. So for me, it was just a case of I was I was obviously the younger brother. So I would go like whatever Quaker was doing. Like yeah. that's what I would do. So we'll just go to the park and play football. And at the time, I didn't really. Realized I was just having fun with it, but yeah. like for me, I was I was playing with the older kids. So for me, that was the first time I ever really got into football, thought about football, and just enjoyed it from there. Really. Yeah, and did you? When did you start playing Sunday league? Um, so Sunday league, I started when I was, I think about seven, eight ish. Yeah. So it's the first first age you can actually start playing Sunday league. It was for a local team. It was what they call exhibition football. So. Um, I just got into that because, again, Quaker was playing for Ashenden, so I thought, you know what, well, yeah. I'll play for Ashenden. So it's just for fun, really. Like, it's just, it's more just enjoyable. Just, yeah. So I, I've done that for one season, really, just that exhibition football. And it was fun. I enjoyed it. Like, got, got to a cup final that year. Yeah. 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 Like, shout out yeah. Ashenden, though, because obviously we're all, we're yeah, all like, ex Ashenden alumni, so we're all actually playing for the team. So. It's kind of mad because a, lo a lot of this is information that me and Kwaku know, but we're just kind of having to reiterate certain <laughs> things. You know, we were all at Ashenden at this at this point. I think you were in a different team to me, but we were both at the club. I think you you two played together as well, yeah. 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 But it's it's kind of mad that. Yeah. Crazy, 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 like, crazy. Like, that kind of touched on when we played in the park, like legendary park, like those two on two games, like they went in and obviously when you were younger and you were playing like not unconsciously, you were just doing what we did, like we're like three, three years older than you. So like you just had not the advantage, but you were just playing and you didn't really know any different from the level you were playing at. And that's the crazy thing about park football, it's like right. street football. Like you play there's people who are fifteen, sixteen, there's people who are like seven, eight, and you're just playing. Like, it could be six against seven, it could be, it could be five against ten, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like anything, really. It's not, it's not, it's not regulated. That's the, that's the thing as well. You've got to remember, like, we thought we were just playing, but you've got to think about the standard at, like, our park, for example, was actually quite high. Like, high. there's academy players in that yeah, park, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we were just, just playing for fun. So, like, people who don't really play football, they're having to raise their game. Yeah, yeah, people, yeah, the younger yeah. kids are having to raise their game. So, it's like, you're, you're learning to... To like meet these high standards without even really realizing, do you know what I mean? Well, off the back of that, like you say, in the park, there was, was Charlie who played for Lake Norian, mm, yeah. like Julian obviously he was at South End, mm. like you at West Ham, mm. and like that Jack Edmonton who plays like non league football now. Like, yeah. there was people that, that played at like, a decent level, yeah. just all like kicking ball in our park. But obviously, Julian, you live a little bit, like you used to live down there when you were young, yeah. young, like just literally a minute down the road, and you moved to a little bit deeper into, into the village or into the town. So how did you like get started in terms of football? Where did your football journey start? Um, so it started here. It did start here, yeah. obviously, when I was living around here, uh, close with uh, you guys. But um, as I moved out, um, I joined um, Ashenden. I remember going to training with you for the first time. <laughs> Kevin Bedell was the manager. Yeah. And I remember the one thing we did that day was third man runs. 
Third man run. That's the first time I learned how to do a third man run. Out of the eights? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kevin, Kevin was elite. Kevin was elite. Like, yeah, I'm telling uh, you. No wonder I didn't make it because that none that went in. No none that went in. Third man run. That's why you made it. That's why you made the professional football because I do not remember that one bit. Like, yeah. I, 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 I mean, look, uh, Sunday league football for me, I, I really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, and then the thing, the thing is, I had to leave Ashenden at one point because obviously I went to school a bit further out, um, more that way. I'm not going to play that way with you. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my friends from school, they all played for a different Sunday league team, and I was going to a school closer to to where I actually lived. So um, I decided to join the team that they, all my friends from primary school, all that. So I had to leave Ashenden, leave you. Sad times. Sad times. I could have come along with you. I was like, no, 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 I'm saying that's the probably worst decision of my life. <laughs> I remember um, Alan, manager, yeah. come to my house. I was like 10 years old, begging me to stay. <laughs> <laughs> begging me to stay. I was like, no. Uh, made my mind up to join FOI Cap. So That's one thing about you, though. You were like strong headed, innit? Like, yeah. you, like, if you want to do something, you're doing it. Whether I'm like more status quo or not, not allowed. Like, I'm not one to rock the boat. Like you're like, now nah, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna play more, and I'm gonna play with my friends in it. Yes, yeah. is... exactly. That's what it was about for me, just playing with my friends in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and that took me to the next level. So playing mm-hmm. with Echo Whitecaps, we had a great season. We had scouts, we had a lot of scouts come to watch our games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tottenham, West Ham, Charlton, etc. And uh, that's when I started thinking about, oh, should I get involved in like pro pro teams and stuff? Mm-hmm. And it's yeah, from there that's where it went to the next level. So you went from Echo to, to South End where you yeah. got scouted. How about yourself, Coach? Were, uh, so were you scouted directly from Ashenden? Yeah, so for me, my my journey was it was quite like it's quite like a nice journey. So as I said, I've done that first year of exhibition football under eights. Yeah. So that was uh, what was nice about that, everything was local. So like I'm playing away games ten minutes from my house. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's that's the beauty of like Sunday League. Yeah. But then um so when I was like under eight, I started making a little bit of noise in terms of like my performances and then scouts coming to watch. I remember there's a park, like um like a field, what, ten minutes from, from my house. Mm. And I remember that was I remember that was one of the occasions I got scouted. That was by um a scout from Charlton. So we were just playing a local team and they've just come and watched the game. After the game they've come up to my I think it was my mum at the time and then just said like, Oh yeah, like we think your son's like uh, that got the potential to do quite well but at the time I'd already been scouted through um, we used to do this thing called soccer schools yeah. most people probably done it in their area let's give them What's a lowdown I, yeah, I think you shine a lot of soccer obviously sorry to interrupt but that's something that we all did and that's something that I think is hugely important that's being missed at the moment in terms of like childcare but that was childcare for us you know what I mean? oh, our mum's yeah. working our parents working and like they used to be able to drop off at a local school and for like six foot seven hours a day, we would be kicking ball and like I suppose where there's lockdown at the moment and stuff like that. But stuff like that's not happening at the moment, which is which is a bit right. mad. But soccer schools where like we kind of cut our teeth, bare yeah. trophies, bare competitions, it was sick. That's where most of my trophies are from. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, so, yeah. Shout out to Kim Bedell. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So like it all started from there for me. Like that's where the enjoyment came into it and like the started like the competitive nature because now you're playing for a trophy. You've got like for like one thing they used to do in our soccer schools is like the young boys they were called like a golden ticket yeah i was young always like give me the ball yeah. you know what i mean i'll do a bit get you two goals so, like, <laughs> if you score it counts as two because yeah. you're a young buck so for me that was like started enjoying it started like started thriving off of scoring and doing well i want more of that i want more of that but yeah so from soccer schools um, there was a West Ham scout there who took me to the grassroots, which again was local. So that was like a year process of just training every week, uh, twice a week. And they were just having a look at look at us at the time. And to be honest, if I'm honest, I didn't actually know what I was doing, if I'm being honest. Like, I just thought this is my training. Man. That's so the thing. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was just going here. This is where I trained for football. And then it's, it's a mad story because like, so I got scouted with... Um, Three of my friends who I was playing football with at the time, like they said, all right, like you four have been chosen out of, I don't know, maybe like 30, 40 kids yeah. to go and play for the West Ham Academy. Yeah. 
and that's like when it first sunk in. I was like, what? Like, yeah. I'm going to West Ham. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, what, an eight year old kid? Mm. And I, at the time, I couldn't even process it. Like, imagine I came back home, I just burst into tears. Do you know what I mean? And the worst thing is, it weren't even good tears. I was upset. I was like, I've got to leave my team, Ashenden. I'm going to yeah. leave Ashenden. Yeah. But yeah, no, so that's, that's what happened. So they told me that I'm signing for West Ham, and then the rest was history, really. Like, I was just. Just made that natural transition into academy football from there. So mm. that was the one year in exhibition football and then straight to West Ham. Uh, what about you, Julian? In terms of obviously you touched on you went for, Ash- for Ashton and the team you played together mm. to uh, echo where a lot of your primary school friends went to. And then who actually scouted you for for South End? What was that process like in terms of getting scouted? Because you got scouted a little bit later than COVID did. You know? Yeah, so I joined South End when I was 11, 12. Mm. Um, and I, do you know, it started with my PE teachers at school. Mm. So Mr. Jones, Mr. Simpson, you know, I'm going to bait them out. I don't care. <laughs> they they um, were trying to do a lot for me. They saw I had some potential. They wanted me to um, to go to the next level. Uh, they had ties with the next level. So um, they put in words with their uh, with the scouts that they know at, mm. at those clubs. So I think it was like Norwich, Arsenal, um, Ipswich, uh, West Ham, Spurs. Uh, but believe it or not, I didn't actually go with their advice, and it was my friend's dad, uh, Nicky Hayes. Oh, Lee, oh Liam's dad. Liam's yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's lived down the, like, down down the road. Down yeah, the road. Yeah, yeah. So he was a photographer at South End, yeah, and um, he was good friends with the, the first team manager at the time, Steve Tilson. Told him about me, and then Steve set it up, Gaffer set it up for me to, uh, you know, go training on the Friday. Went training on the Friday. Um, then I was involved in the, with the team for the Sunday game at QPR, scored, and they signed me straight after that. Jeez. So, yeah. It's quite interesting to know the difference because obviously South End are well, now a League Two team. I think at the time they were a League Two team as well, and West Ham being a Premier League team. Like for you, in terms of getting that kind of that entry or like pathway into the into the academy, was more direct with the actual gap of the first team yeah. gap. Whereas obviously with West Ham, there's, there's different levels and different tiers for it. So I think it's just interesting to know the difference between like. Premier League football at the time and, and league like league football, EFL football. Yeah. It's just like crazy to think that you have direct contact with Steve Tilson from the off. Like, yeah. I don't even know if you talk, ever talked to the West Ham first team manager ever with any mm-hmm. time at West Ham. So yeah. mad, mad. I suppose like the uh, the next kind of point that we want to touch on is your life actually at the academy. Because obviously you got scouted, you're buzzing, like it's, yeah. uh, it's a big time for you, man. But like when you're actually there, like as a, as Cody, you're a seven, eight, nine year old, you're junior as a 11, 12 year old, like, what's it like? What's the change like? What's the training like? What's life at the academy for you, Julian? Um, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, the tech, like, it was a bit different because obviously we were doing like legit, uh, drills, you know, mm. whereas Sunday league was more like just five of us, like, enjoy yourself, go get boy, get all that, yeah. uh, shooting this and that. But there was a bit more purpose to the training with, uh, at a pro club, which you'd expect. Yeah. Um, and as you go through the age groups, it gets a bit more intense. The coaching gets better as well. Mm. Um, and I would say for me where it really sunk in that, you know, I'm, I'm at a pro club was the first tour I went on. Yeah. Um, I was 12 years old. Um, it was the first season that was the same season that I signed for the club. Um, we went to France, but I went with the under 16s. <laughs> they invited me to, to go with the under 16s, um, to this little tournament called Le Hotel. And, um, you know, I, I didn't get much playing time as you expect, but. Yeah. I think I came on in the semis and came on in the finals of that tour. Uh, obviously, like when it was a bit more certain I was going to win it, etc. Like the game and final, etc. But um, yeah, just going abroad with the team, yeah. you know, I was like, okay, this is this is what it is. It's different, isn't it's it? This is a bit different. Yeah, it? yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Like I just went, like from my experience going towards the Kojo and that. But I suppose Kojo for you, the same thing. What what was it like in terms of at the academy when you first got there? The difference between. West Ham and Ashton that you love so much. Um, and yeah, just the, the main differences. Um, I'd say there's a lot of similarities, actually, like in terms of the environment. Like, it's always like a really friendly, bubbly environment. Like, I, like, throughout my whole childhood playing football, academy, exhibition football, I've always enjoyed it. That was the good thing. I don't know if it's specifically to West Ham, but the environment was always good. It was just an environment where you can have fun. But development was like key, and like just learning was like a massive part of it. I think for young kids, it was they had high standards that you 
you kind of it was good to be in that environment because you like you don't realize but they're setting you up like in terms of life in terms of trying to reach a goal and keep to those standards like i remember West Ham have always been known for trying to um do their academy the right way so like playing through the thirds playing on the ground that kind of football and we had a coach i remember i think it was what under 11s or 12s and we used to play on 3g and uh, like all my life this coach would get angry if you played a pass that bobbled like he would get angry like it was a thing where you better play that smooth kind of thing yeah, yeah. and you didn't even that like, you don't clock it until you get to the saturday and you lot are popping it on the grass like mm. every touch is like fizz it in and everyone can play but at the time it was like it was hard to adapt to that because it was like wow my every every little movement every pass is being scrutinized but it's just making a better player so yeah. like I, I would say I enjoyed it like all the coaches were really were really helpful and really considerate and I'd say at West Ham I don't know how it is at other academies but the vet especially up until under 16s development was way more important than women way more important like if like we'll lose but if we've got a lot out of that game they're happy and whether it's right or wrong I, I feel like it, it it does it does work yeah well that makes a lot of sense and as the, the academy was so tailored towards development who were some of the players that you know you tried to develop your game based on who did you idolize growing up like especially in the west Ham academy or outside of it yeah so i was always like majority of my time at West Ham I was an attacking player so I'd say like my favourite my favourite player just because of his sheer class and like his panache and his, his style of like the way he does it was always Henri Henri like he was just I used to watch him and think I need to finish like that do you know what yeah, I mean he was the guy I need to grab the ball and be able to run at my man like that mm-hmm. with a finesse do you know what I mean mm-hmm. first time I'd seen a finesse finish like yeah. just open up the foot do you know what I mean? Like, I was yeah, trying to do that. Different. Yeah. But then I was playing um, on the wing quite a lot at West Ham. So, funny or not, um, or believe it or not, I should say, like, Ashley Young was someone that I really looked at and thought, you know what? He was baller, man. That's the thing. I used to look at him and be like, I used to like seeing players in myself. I was like, I knew I had, I was shot. And if I cut in, I had a good shot. And that's what his game was. So I used to just like watch how he would cut in or like what part of the foot he'd control the ball with to like beat his defender and then yeah. that that wrapped shot that that was that was me like young yeah yeah young well, back in the early days man take he was him a in at take him in no yeah. I, I remember him yeah but that's that's not, that would be my first what you mean these United days I let them fool you do you remember yeah. what young was on yeah yeah like you say like what the Watford days the early Villa days yeah, like, yeah, he I, was I, he was on smoke to me yeah. you can't forget he's still playing as well and he's changed positions and he's at Inter Milan now. He's a, he's yeah, 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 but I know I know don't violate him I'm violating him it was one of our own you know at one point but I know what you're saying, but that's like an interesting player to kind of base your game yeah. on. That's a very specific one. But for you, who who would you say oh, that like? Messi. Oh, <laughs> like, this guy, bro. What do you mean? Like, he's yeah. like the best player in the world for nah, me. Like, nah. I want, obviously, I wanted to hit those. Yeah, I, I always yeah. tried to like imitate my game around. I hear that. You know? I, hear like, that. I had a video on my phone like um, of all these best bits before every single game I watch it. Yeah. Every yeah. single game, and like try and if I get yeah. a chance in the game, you know, to do something. To be fair, like obviously everyone's at like Ronaldo, Messi, Ronaldo, Messi. I remember when we were younger, Barcelona was always your team, and yeah. Messi was always even from everyone knows Messi or everyone knew Messi was going to be a baller. But from early, you were on Messi, like yeah, that Messi was like, the like, being left footed as well. I suppose. Exactly, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, lefties, lefties are special. I'm gonna say it now. If you're left footed, you, you've always got an advantage. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Am I lying? Yeah, you're lying. How am I lying? It's not a fact, you know what I mean? Like, what, well, right foot players aren't doing... Nah, there's, but... There's a lot of you. There's a lot of you. Oh, okay. Nah, bro, okay, nah, I'm, I'm bringing it to Chelsea. When you saw Hakim Ziyech rip them balls over the left foot, yeah. it, looks it, looks it looks different. It looks Name different. Name one left foot player you know that's got bad tech. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> you can't think of one. You can't think of one. You can't do think of one. Yeah. You're applying pressure to my own house. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm talking about. Thanks, so no, no, I hear what you're saying. Like most left footers have tech. You know what I mean, you know, it is. for sure. Okay, so in terms of academy life, obviously, when I remember you, man, flying. So you were flying from from under nine, what, cold, coldest nine year old yeah. in the country. Yeah. <laughs> Ask around. Ask around. Ask around. Ask around. No, you didn't tell them. Tell them. <laughs> <laughs> tell them. Yeah, he was cold. I remember going to one game. How coldest nine year old in the country? <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say it, but you said it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but you, you're cold as well. I remember you going to play against was it Arsenal? Ah, uh, oh, yeah. what, he ah. four or five goals, bro. Take it in, take it in. Like, <laughs> How, what, what year was that? I'm it was a random one. It was that. It was that. Their place in yeah, their North training London. ground. The training ground. Hey, Wait, Lens. Training ground. hey Lens. It's the academy training. Yeah, ground. academy training ground. But like deep, in, we've just like imagine because we're young, so everything's just like kind of normal to us. So yeah. we've gone to watch our cousin play against Arsenal. Big game. We thought that like, we did not expect this guy to score four goals against. Right. Five goals against Arsenal and he's playing at South End, like yeah. doesn't make sense. Like take that in, you know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah, it's so different. It's different. that just shows like it's where different. he was at at the time, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's true and like that's that's what I was gonna come on to. Like obviously he does put points where both of you are flying. I think maybe you're flying at a little bit of an older age, um, so there's an expectancy in my head that like, oh he's gonna make he's gonna make it linked with different clubs and whatnot. But then obviously with academy football, people who don't necessarily know or haven't got the inside, there's a lot of politics involved. So there's a lot of things where you might be the best player, but you might not always be selected. There might be a point where you're you're getting dropped and you don't know why, or there's agendas where they're trying to push agents on you or whatnot. Oh, yeah. So kind of, I'll start with Kojo, touch on like the politics um, within academy football. Was there any, was there anything that felt you felt held, held back a little bit? Was there anything that you think that was untoward within academy football? Yeah, I think, like, whatever industry you're in, there's always going to be some sort of politics, like, and, yeah, that can hold you back. But, yeah, for, in terms of specifically to the, like, academies, I'd say, like, it just, you see little things. So, the first, probably, sign I saw of it was just things like end of season meetings. I remember I used to go up to West Ham with my close guy every single day, like, we, we go, well, not every single day, but, I mean, twice a week, we go up to training together, Chadwell Heath. And that uh, end of the season, you have a meeting, like, how's the season gone? And I remember, like, like coming in the season, it was getting a bit tense for my, my friend. Mm. And, like, he would go, like, um, when it was time for his meeting, he'd go there and they'd have a sit down, like, half an hour sit down and talk about it and see, like, where he's at. And, like, for me, I remember, like, my dad was thinking, like, Kojo ain't had one yet, but this is when I was flying. Yeah. So, like, my dad goes, oh, like, when's Kojo's meeting? Don't worry about that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so like yeah, yeah. at the time, so that's when I'd say I've benefited from it. It's just favoritism. Do you know what I mean? In mm-hmm. terms of like you don't even have to do things properly. They kind of put you in a different bubble. Yeah. Like they they make you feel um, a different type of way in terms of compared to the other players. So I probably experienced that quite a bit when I was um, when I was young. I'd say stuff like um, tours, as you mentioned earlier, tours is always big when you're. Mm-hmm. Uh, like uh, in the academy is something that you enjoy you look forward to people are missing out on these tours do you know what I mean there's the same faces at these tours mm-hmm. so that was a, another time where you start seeing the the gap start building in terms of who they're going to focus time and attention on and who they're not so things like that um, I'd say and then as you were saying as well when you get a bit older agents start coming into play and with agents come perks come free boots and things like that so mm. you start seeing players getting offered agents by the club other players aren't and and you just it just becomes clear who they're investing time in yeah and and that can be demoralizing for yeah. a player who's not getting that attention yeah. so i feel like when i was getting a bit older i wasn't getting that attention and i was so used to it yeah. coming up where i was always like up here like my standards up here and then when it dropped a little bit all the attention goes. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's where like I feel like if they were able to manage that a bit better and, and like look after all the players in the same way, mm. it might you might produce a few more players who might fall by the wayside because they feel like um, detached from from what they're trying to achieve kind of thing. Is it kind of like they give you that full sense of uh, security? Like we talked to Kieran Bowe before someone played with you, he was like the blue eyed boy throughout the whole time in West Ham, he was like captain of the, the the youth team banging goals and throughout the whole time coddled, coddled, coddled like you're going to make it, you're going to make it as soon as they're done with you they're done with you innit and like as you're a kid so that you're when you're getting these perks you're not seeing it but when you when you're you're feeling a bit like disenfranchised and distanced like you feel that a lot more so do you reckon the captain should do a lot more to to make you to, to be transparent and make everyone be on the same level it's just basically obviously we live in a world where ability takes you as far as you can go but do you reckon there should be a case of the academy that should understand that your children and everyone should be treated the same way and if you're going to make it you're going to make it but you shouldn't be given different incentives or different perks because you're a better player as a child 
Yeah, no, I, I agree with that statement, to be fair. It's hard because the human nature is you're going to be attracted to what's popping, popping basically. Yeah. yeah, so it is difficult, but yeah, as you said, children are like fragile, do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the emotions that they go through, like on a day to day, maybe not playing, and, and they, they, like, this is the thing they love doing. So if, if they're not enjoying it, it, it can be difficult. So yeah, no, I definitely agree. They, they, there needs to be a bit more like management in terms of the kids their emotions and how they how they treat the, the kids but yeah no i would agree with that statement how about for yourself julian was there anything did you ever come across any sort of politics when you were involved in the academy at south end yeah um just like coach said uh, i think early on you start to see it with in regard with favoritism yeah. um players that get selected to go and tour or play up an age group and guys who don't and some of that i didn't actually think about um about how that plays mentally on the guys that aren't selected consistently. Um, that's obviously got huge demoralising. Um, for me, I was fortunate enough where I was never put in those situations. I was always that person who would play up or was getting selected. Um, and as I got older, the person who was getting an agent pushed upon me. Um, I, I kind of fell into that bracket, so I was fortunate in that regard. But um, um, something that happened to, to me towards the end of my time at South End is um you could so there was a player in the younger age group who was flying doing very well was in my position um and he was being selected to play resis and travel with first team etc which is something that uh, that i was doing that i was expecting to be doing yeah right but the reason that they were doing that for us because they knew that he was on his way out so they wanted to raise his stock so that they could get more more money from him. Wow, yeah. And, and I, got, I remember this happened because um, the gaffer at the time, the youth team manager, he brought me in a, in a room and told me exactly what was happening and why that was happening, like why he was being selected. How old were you at this point? Uh, 17, so oh, I was just like, yeah. I, was, I was older, I could take it, but um, obviously I didn't understand why that was happening, you know? Um, so that was another side to the politics that I saw. Who is that? <laughs> no, 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 no. What the f- you, yeah. I took leave so many times. Yeah, but that's the thing as well, because you like it must cause this kind of friction. Again, I'm not going to mention them to West Ham, but. I remember you're close to two people that didn't really get on and like when like somebody comes in and you're friends you know what I mean but you're naturally just pitted against each other because you're competing for limited places like yeah. what one out of a hundred people make it really so it's like even though you're boys with people and like the person that was mentioned previously you're boys with like at a surface level you're looking at it like rah like my man's getting said like I know what I can do yeah. like, and I know that I'm better than him everyone think, has to think that they're better or oh, they wouldn't yeah. be there mm. it just must pit like must pit young people against each other, which necessarily, it might be healthy in terms of like developing that competitive edge, but in terms of the psyche, it must not be great for young kids to, to kind of feel inferior or superior yeah. at any, any point of their development. I completely agree with that. Um, I think another thing is that the club always have plans. They're planning ahead for, they, yeah, they see yeah. who's going to make it or where they can get money from. Yeah. You know, so there was a few players in my age group um, that were really good, that got moves before the youth team. Uh, one went to Liverpool, another went to Everton. Um, the guy, there was a guy who's a year above me, he went to Derby. Um, so they had plans for these guys, and obviously I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm doing well here as well, mm. when am I going to get my move? And I think the club always just had in their mind, I'm going to stay, and they want me to go into the first team, etc. And I was kind of okay with that, you know, but then after later on down the line leaving the club and you hear about all the offers that got turned down mm. etc mm. you start thinking how things could have been different yeah. but um, listen that's, Touch, that's just football touch on that let's delve into that so you say offers <laughs> coming in I want to hear names you know what I mean I want the receipts so like what so you're you're flying at South End yeah like and I know this as well so like this is for this is for the listeners like what, what teams were coming in for you what was the situation there because I know that some fuckery happened at South End in terms of not telling you what's happening, yeah. like keeping you in the dark. So who came in for you and what, what was that situation like? Um, so <laughs> the first one that I found out about was when I was really young. Uh, I heard that United had shown some interest. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the boys who was in the youth team, 
um, told me because he heard it from his agent. Yeah. Um, uh, club didn't say anything about it. I didn't confront the club. I was young, like, about a year, two years in into South End, like, I was going to start drama. Um, next was City. The City one was quite, quite mad actually, because we was on tour mm. at the time, um, and I got a phone call from one of my ex teammates' dad. Yeah. Um, the f- completely so. Yeah. <laughs> Because everyone knows this guy, he was very well connected, like he knew he was very close with scouts and agents, etc. He's called me saying, What's happening with, with City? Like, are they probably going to accept it? And I was like, What do you mean? What are you talking about? And they're like, But that City put a bid in for you. And I'm like, I haven't heard this. I haven't heard this at all. And I was sitting next to um, Teddy Nesbitt at the time, uh, who's the left back in our team, and like, he could overhear the conversation. And he flat out just went to our coach who was sitting in the seat ahead of us. Hobsey, what's going on with City? Did they put a bid in for Julian? Yeah. Put him on the spot. On the spot. Hold that. Hold that. I'm here. I'm here. I want to see. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Put him on the spot. He was like, yeah, yeah, we've had some interest, but nothing official, this and that. And I was just like, okay. I didn't make a big deal out of it, but um, yeah, just moved on. And then mm. we had this tournament called Toomey Trophy. When you get to the youth team, that we hosted every pre season, like four, 14 tournaments. So the first year we had it, it was Everton, Arsenal, uh, Fulham, and ourselves in it. Uh, we played Arsenal the first day, we beat them, um, and went into the final the next day against Everton. So the evening that we played Arsenal, all the coaches go out, like, uh, to eat, etc. drink, and my agent was out with him as well. And he's told me the next day that there was a lot of conversations about you, Everton want to put a bid in, but Rick shut it down straight away. How old are you at this, uh, at this time? 17. No, 16. 16. Did, bro. My first year school, yeah, 16. But why course he Why course he did? That's like, as Julian said, like, they're, they're like, the business. Roots for him. Yeah, but they're even, their route for him as you saw it, was like, they thought he was going to be in their first team and then, like, maybe yeah. do a bit for them. They'd sold people, as you said, they'd sold Femi. That was enough for them, probably. Mm-hmm. So, so it was like, you hear so many stories of that. Like, I've heard that numerous times, especially at South End. Yeah. Like, yeah. that they... Because the thing with South End, where they're quite, um... Where they were, like, a League Two club. Yeah. And they, they scout, um... They scout a bit different. They, they'll take players off the park. Yeah. Like, people that they see raw talent in. Yeah. They'll scout them and then groom them to to yeah. become like more all rounded players. So th- I think that's that's one of the the things they do. But yeah, as you said, yeah. well, we don't have to mention like names of them, but there's people that we like know. You guys know that the same situation happened to them, but they were they had a not a bit more now because you were in the dark for it. But like they the the, the the call came from a different club mm. and they pushed the move in or they went to a different club and now they're flying out. They're yeah. professional footballers. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. You got, but you don't know that if you're not if you're not in it, you're not your head's not in it. You haven't had parents to play with whatnot. Like you don't know. Like you're just there. Like okay, they told me I'm gonna play for South End, so I'm gonna play for South End. Like exactly that. Like without like as you said, mentioning names, I've got like a close friend who who did have that kind of guidance or like a parent who understood the game or who yeah. played in the game. And lucky for him, he had that guidance where they were a bit more resilient in terms of when that South End are saying no, the move's not happening. They're saying yes, the move is happening. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, <laughs> if you've got that kind of guidance and you know what boundaries you can push, like, bro, I had no chance. You know what I mean? He's in there like, if he's at the game, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, bro, <laughs> when he's at the game, he's away from everybody. He's distant. You know what I mean? Anti arms like that. Yeah. Like, he's angry. Bro. <laughs> like, what's wrong Take with Ben today? No, um, no, honestly, the guidance is is massive. So like, people pushing through moves yeah. deserve moves. But you might have to push it through because the club's not not like got you in as their best interest. Like that's yeah. the sad reality of it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You you kind of you'd always like to think I've been at this club for this many years. Surely they've got my best interest um, in their plans. But it's not always the way. So yeah. if you have got a bit of guidance and you you, like, you know what you're doing, then you, you should be able to. Like Julian, like he was flying. Like do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you haven't even mentioned it. Like you don't what you had the debut when you was what sixteen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He, someone who's doing that yeah, should be able to push, push a move. But yeah. again, we we like, 
we're in a similar position where we don't have that kind of football background or in our family where they they know what what they can get away with. Yeah. So, but yeah, it is what it is. You kind of you learn after, which is the yeah. the hard part. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Well, I suppose the main thing that we want to know is obviously you, you guys spent so much time playing academies. Who are the best players that you played with Wait. and best players that you played against? This is the bit that we want to know from everybody. Like we don't want you to hold back as well. Like just wrap your brains and think about the the best players. Yeah. Oh. It's t- it's, yeah, I mean, I know you got, I know you got a list, bro. I can you make a list. list. <laughs> I can make a list. I can't <laughs> leave people out, you know. Like, I yeah. probably will. I'm just gonna name off the top of my head. Like, no, I, I only put a few on my list. To be fair, like, um, obviously when I was at Southend, mm. um, Jack Payne, yeah, baller. Yeah, and man. you know what? You know what's good about Jack as well? Like, he was like, I can't say average because he's always been a player, isn't it? But he's worked to get where he is. Like yeah. he would always be like, "Oh, let's do finishing after every day. Let's do finishing after." Yeah. And you literally see his like the progression and the the quality build. So like, you, like I had to respect it. Like Jack Payne, yeah, yeah. Well done, so, and he's doing well now. So. That's it, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's my best you know, it's different. It's more just a choir. So yeah, so no, Payne, yeah, yes. Payne. I'd say um, uh, Chuba Akpom. Yeah. He's just come back to England now as well. Mm. He was like, he was a golden boy. When we were young, yeah. you know, in like your year group, you have people that are like, ah, oh, this is the guy, like, he's yeah. gonna, he's gonna do a madness. He was just wavy, do you know what I mean? Mm. At that age, he was miles above it. You played with Essex as well, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, because obviously I was at West Ham, he was at Arsenal. We didn't even play each other up until under 16s because football politics, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was yeah. some sort of issue in terms of, some poaching of players. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, West Ham well, was a big thing. You could play against each other. Yeah. So yeah, we didn't play against each other until we were sixteen. But for Essex, he always came like he was always like a superstar. And he, he believed it, mm. and like it's just he had that aura in terms of like I remember I went and watched. I went with you. We went and watched that youth cup game. United, oh, yeah, United, uh, West Ham. West Ham, and he was there. We must have been like sixteen, fifteen in time. Mm. People asking for his autograph. And I was nice. thinking, what? Okay, nice. like I'm trying to be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Chuba, he was he was like a top player. Um, I put Josh here as well. He's someone like um I grew up with because um he we both were at West Ham. I think he came when he was about ten, nine ish, and we went to the same school. That's Josh Cullen for everybody. Who's been. He, oh yeah, my bad, <laughs> Josh Cullen. So yeah. Um, yeah, so he's Jamie. You're a West Ham fan, so yeah, 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 you're yeah. you're probably as disappointed as most West Ham fans to see yeah. him go on a permanent, but. He he's been trying to break into the team for a while now, so yeah. he gets to that point. I don't know, like I don't know what you think of it, like his move to handle it. Yeah, well, uh, it's 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 a sight. I mean, uh, I'm finding a, a lot about West Ham in, in these podcasts. There's there's a lot of young players that don't really get the chance of West Ham, mm. like like yourself. Like we spoke to Kieran. Mm. Um, well, I remember so, yeah. I was talking to you about Grady as well, weren't we? we were oh, yeah, Grady. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Grady selling this summer. Mm. I think the like. The board were all over the place. Yeah. The board tried to justify selling Grady because we got eight wingers <laughs> to sell Dean Garner to then sa- sign Ben Rama, <laughs> another yeah. player, you know. So it's like. You're on tour sport talking nonsense. Like, West Ham were a joke club. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. you know, we don't lose that identity as well, that like academy, do you know what I mean? Oh, That's for sure. Like, yeah. other than Declan Rice, like, who's coming through? Like, you got, like, Johnson, Leon, right back, but. Mm-hmm. Not many really young West Ham players from Trump. It's changed. Back in the day, that's I think that's all of them, but I was like, literally. what, Joe Cole? Yeah, like, like that. growing up, growing up, growing up, oh, ever. Like, yeah, yeah. That, all, the, all the golden generation, like... Even, like, Carrick, so it's like, for yeah, example. Yeah, we, yeah. we brought him in late, but, like, even Carrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many ballers. Players, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, anyway, so that was Josh, yeah, Josh, top player. Top yeah. player, like, I ain't even got to say much about him. <clears throat> um... Another one, just it sounds a bit random, but I remember playing against this guy in the night cup, and I was thinking, what? This guy's different. Like, um, Charles Musonda. Charles Musonda. What? Jeez. Like, we played against him, for, he was at Chelsea. This guy was, like, the best thing I've seen. Yeah. Bro, who was I saying? I think I was saying it to you, where I was like, I came away from that game thinking, I need to change my playing style or something, you know what I mean? I need to play like him. Yeah. But yeah, so he he's someone who... I played against and I thought, no, this guy's different. Yeah. And um in that same team, Lost His Cheek, he like we I played against him every year, like until like well, under sixteens and he's always been like this. Whenever I come to watch you, like obviously being a Chelsea fan, like 
Lots of sheep, lots of sheep, lots of sheep. So before like you come, you come on everyone's radar, I was like, this guy is different. Play football manager. I was like, it's the truth on this and it's the truth in real life as well. Like, he was, he, yeah, he was different. But the thing is, he was physically bigger than everybody else. Yeah, so yeah. some games he was playing centre back, some games he was playing, uh, playing centre mid. Yeah. And he was just different. Like physically, he was just different to everyone. He still is to this day. Of course, injuries were kind of taking his toll. Yeah. No, he's doing alright at Fulham now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I used to learn from Chelsea. I think he's got a career. I think he's definitely got a career there. Oh, he left at Chelsea. Yeah. I think he has a career. Fingers yeah. crossed, but obviously the way the project's going at Chelsea is a bit it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, he, 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 he makes it just needs a good run. With Chelsea players, it gets to a point where it's like they get squeezed out. Like I look at Chalaba, you would have thought he was gonna be. You would have thought. Do you know what? I'm not gonna. Lie. I didn't think. I didn't see it's it. it. I didn't see it with Chalaba. I saw Chalaba to be fair. Oh, he was like he had something a bit different. I mean. Um, he made one assist, I can't remember who it was against, I think it was like the 15, 16 season, which was different, I was like, this but it's it's right, it's right place, right time, like, you know how the class of 92 all came through at the, yeah, the yeah, right yeah. time, Chelsea time. right now, what, Rich James, Mason Mount, um, Tammy, yeah. Tomori, He's still got right. Masonda as well, he's on loan. Masonda's like, he's seen him got Wham now. He's got it. <laughs> 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 like, part of the Chelsea loan system. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 That's, that's a whole different episode in itself, the whole Chelsea How many years system. is his contract, by the way? I, I don't even know. Like, the, the, the whole... How many zeros is on yeah. that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> different. Yeah, but, um, yeah, no, just a couple more I had on my list. I had a Wobie, obviously, I can't miss him out because yeah. I played with him again at Essex, but Tuba always used to rave about him. Tuba Akron used to be like, yeah, Wobie, like, he's different. And I just thought, nah, he's like, he's happy though. I was like, he's on the bench, bro. <laughs> I'm starting right wing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, um, nah, he was cold. When I when when I clocked it, then I was like, okay, that's what Tuba was talking about. Yeah. But like, he's you've seen what he's done. Like, he yeah. was he was a top player, man. Mm. Like you, and he's obviously related to JJ Kotcha. You, you see that? You can you see, see it. it. You can see you the see flair. It. Yeah. Bruh. But then, yeah, the last, the, probably the best player I'd say is um, Ali. And I remember you were at that game. Well, Delhi Ali. Yeah, Delhi Ali. Yeah. yeah. Bro, this guy, what, we were, must have been like 18. He was at, is it 18? I would have been around at 18, 17. He was at MK Dons. Yeah. Every time he got the ball, he was just making someone. Just just cause, you know? Yeah. Like, ah. You get me? I didn't get made, come on, bro. Don't oh, I, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get made, yeah. sure, don't try. Yeah. But, no, Ali, yeah. Oof, yeah, he was different, like. Because our cousin played in that MK Don's team as well. Yeah, um, exactly. Jonathan. Jonathan, yeah. So, um, and yeah, Ali, Ali just... Ali, yeah, he, so he was the best for me, like, in terms of seeing someone produce and actually be effective. Yeah. Ali was the best. But yeah, I know, I know you've got a long list, so I'll I sit back for this I'm one. Gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna, long list, I'll sit bro. back for this one. I'm just going to just name what I can remember. Yeah. So guys that I've played with, obviously, um, the entire time at South End, um, I said him in James Stevens. His technique was a joke. It reminded yeah. me of Gerard, like the mold, just like he would get the ball sent in, he would just spray it there, spray it there. I'll like, touch the, the touch line, and I know it's just coming to me on my dime, like on the dime in my foot, yeah. and then boom, I'm away. Um, Love playing with James Stevens. Um, who else? Teddy Nesbitt, left back. Just the best partnership. Is that the one who got yeah. onto the gaffer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was trying to get you a move. Yeah, he was a Cody. He was my guy. He was my roommate in Jigs as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I, I wouldn't track back because I know he's got it covered. Mm. Like, I had, I trusted him, you know, to, unless he had like a pacey winger, then, you know, I might have to help him out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. But, um, the guys I played against, I mean, actually, going back to guys I played with, like first team, obviously, when I was, uh, you know, in and out of the first team, um, when I was in the youth team, I would say, so Dougie Freeman, um, mm. obviously he finished his career at Southend. Yeah, um, Palace Legends. Yeah, he yeah. was someone that, um, he he was quite close with, with us young guys, you know, mm. he would look after us, he would uh, take us in Andos, you know, I mean, we, went pay, we went paintballing one time and um, just gave us money to get food after, yeah. stuff like that. He always called me two pack as well. Never called me by my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he was a good egg. Um, Frano as well, Simon Francis. Yeah. So he was a young pro at South End, and obviously he went on to to Bournemouth, captain of Bournemouth, um, up until what, last season, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he, he was good. He was always good. Um, guys that I played against. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah man. So. I just talk about memories, like what I can remember from them. So Jack Wilshere, yeah. 
I remember when we played Arsenal one time, the first time I saw someone score a free kick where they pass it underneath the wall. Yeah. What, I, I, that youth team? That, that, I was younger than that. I think I was 15. Jeez. And he's passing it under the wall. Yeah. Scoring goals. Like, this guy's different. Different. Um, Frimpong was in that team. Felix Otogi was in that team. Um, I'm seeing you. I know you don't. You want me to say you Sterling. Uh, yeah. I want to hear about the Liverpool uh, youth game. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, wait, 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 wait. Let's preface this because this man hates talking about it. He hates talking about it. And obviously the goals that came, they weren't on his side of the pitch. But, we're okay, let's set the scene. We're all excited. Youth Cup game. Southend have made it deep into the FA Youth Cup. <laughs> they're playing against <laughs> Liverpool at, what, at Anfield. Round yeah. five. Round five. Like, they're deep into it. Everybody around watching Auntie Media sit. Everybody <laughs> watching on TV. Like, <laughs> is that what you've done? The whole family, the whole family you around here ready to watch it. And obviously, we're hearing whispers like, Brian Sterling, this. We don't even know, but this day, this time, how old was he? He was, he was 16. Yeah. And how old are you? Uh, I was 17. I was about to turn 18. So he was, uh, Brian Sterling playing a year or two up. Yeah. yeah. What this guy did on Valentine's Day, mm. the Valentine's Day massacre, bro. Yeah. Nine nil, racking bags in five. Like, just, just like elaborate on that a little bit, please. Ah, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, we hyped up quite a bit because it was big for us. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like we dispatched Derby in the. Yeah, the Derby one. The Derby one was big. Yeah, we up. went. We played Derby at Pride Park, beat them three one. After going one 0 down. Be Coventry in the round before. Um, I think uh, every round we scored three goals yeah. up until that Liverpool game. Um, and I remember because like it was the days where people had BBM. iPhone yeah. wasn't around yet. Um, <laughs> oof, I sound old. <laughs> oh, 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 I feel like the year before iPhone. Wow. Like, like the year before I mean, iPhone. I mean, <laughs> 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 what well, people? Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm sure there was a few broadcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you not seen this. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Tough, bro. Tough. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I remember putting on my BBM, like, all, the, all the boys put the BBM, like, watch us or playing on whatever channel it was on. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we got dealt with. Mm. Nine zip. Zip. But, like, let, let's. Also, but, well, but let me let me just say though, yeah, in go. my opinion, yeah. it wasn't a 9-0 game. Take that in. Take yeah, it in. Yeah, take it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it all in. Imagine these 9-0s, hey, it wasn't a 9-0 game. What was it? What was it? Yeah, I mean, we definitely deserve a couple of goals in there, I'd say, you know. 9 <laughs> zip. It was a 9-0 game. But also, to be fair, it's not only like it was a Raheem Sterling show. Oh, yeah. They, 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 they had the most the expensive team, team in the, like, the country. Uh, go through that team. Let's see who was in there. Like. Um, so, who's playing left? Uh, what's his name? Jack Robinson. Plays Sheffield United now. Yeah. In centre-back. Stephen Summer, I think, and they had like Andre Wisdom as well. I don't think he played that game. Connor Cody as well. Connor Cody was centre mid, captain. Um, Raheem Sterling on the right, Suso on the left. Different what team. What chance did we have? <laughs> <laughs> um, what's his name? Adam Morgan. Oh, yeah. Adam Morgan. He was was Flanagan playing? Yeah, John Flanagan played as well. Yeah. On my side. But it, it, it just didn't. It sounds dumb saying this, but it didn't feel like a 9-0 game. Nah, I hear you, I hear you. Like, it didn't feel like it. They were just so clinical. Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, but, I know you, I hear you. I didn't say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what defence do I have? <laughs> but, like, it was a big deal anyway, regardless of the result or not. You're getting that far in the cup. And obviously, the, t- the, the players in that team are r- ridiculous. But yeah. apart from that, any other, any other big names you played against? The, uh, the one of the team in America. The guy in America. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, What's his name? <laughs> Robbie Keane, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so obviously after South and I left and went to America, probably touching that later. Um but in a pre season game we played against LA Galaxy. Um it was their pre season as well. And obviously Galaxy in the first half put out their strongest team, Robbie Keane was part of that. And he was just showing us a different level, like Honestly, the goal he scored against us was a joke. The movement, everything. He must have dropped in, span, little pirouette, ran out. Their centre back, I think, or centre mid, Omar Gonzalez, I think, at the time. Diag, our keeper, I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, Jeff, I don't know what he's doing. But he started running out a little bit. And then Robbie seen that. First time volley, dink. Yeah, different. Uh, yeah. No. But, but he's a culture player, man. He plays like, he plays into yeah. the land, plays Spurs, like. 
he's 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 been around and he killed it in America as well. Like, yeah, I just probably lost all that. Um, any, anyone else on that list for move on? Um, there probably is, but I just can't think right now. Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, um, touch on something. Oh, Jesse Lingard, like Ravel Morris. Rav- yeah, Ravel. Rav- I forgot about United guys. Yeah, yeah. Ravel Morris is different. Uh, it's just too easy. My Michael Keane. I'm not sure if he's in that squad. No, he, he probably was. Him and his brother. Yeah, that was brother as well. Will. Um. Yeah. yeah. Name, name more than enough. Yeah, there's the ballers out there. Yeah, Sorry if I missed you out. Yeah. But yeah, I suppose that's like now that we've heard all about like your time in the academies, there would have been a time for both of you when that unfortunately came to an end. What was it like when you know you were released from these academies? What what was that like for you? Well, for me, I kind of saw it coming. So. My first year, um, Scholar, um, it was a very good year. I made my debut in the first team. Um, I was a regular in the reserves, captain in the first team, etc. Um, and but unfortunately, at that end of that season, the club got relegated into League Two, um, and the gaffer lost his job along with the backroom staff. Um, so coming into my second year, we've got a new manager now, Paul Sparrow. Um I thought obviously that I'd be progressing on and start spending more time in the first team, yeah. etc. Because the entire team literally left. The entire first team literally left. The Paul brought in a brand new squad. Um, but that wasn't the case. Um, that season, he didn't, I don't think I had many conversations with him. You know, um, I don't think he was a fan of me. I wasn't a fan of him. I don't care, you can keep it in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't like him. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like him. Old school gaffer though, isn't it? Proper old, old school. school the type like... of gaffer the way he would play like your six foot five, seven foot forward on the wing. You get knockdowns. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like flick that. it on. Like, what that. is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Need to get like that, bro. Yeah. Oh, so, no, but even so, like, that he was, he's tri- like, I remember, sorry, old school, old yeah. school, like, different. So, um. It didn't work out for me in there. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, didn't, it didn't work out for me, yeah. <laughs> But um, so yeah, that's I saw the, the flip like that. So first year flying, second year all of a sudden not in the plans. Um, so leading up to that, leading up to the decision time, obviously I, I knew I probably wasn't going to get anything. Um, but luckily behind the scenes, my agent was was working, and you know, the weekend I found out. I think the Monday I went straight to Derby. Um, done well at Derby. Uh, got injured. Um, in the game, came back to South with treatment and I was supposed to go back up to Derby, but Derby had moved on, um, didn't want to wait, so after that, you know, I just, I was in non-league for like a year, it wasn't for me, not for me, and you know, I got the chance to go back to America, but what I will touch on is, the entire time I spent at South and obviously they make you feel loved, like, yeah. I felt like I was important, this and that. Obviously, up until that last year. And then, obviously, you get let go. Um, for young players, it's tough. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I did find it tough at, at first. Like, I, I fell out of love with the game a bit. That's why that was part of the decision I made to go out to America. I just wanted to get away from it in England. Um, mm. After leaving, didn't hear from the club whatsoever. Like, no. they don't follow up, they don't check, see how you're doing, nothing, nothing like that. Um, the LFE do, though. The LFE, I got a call. I think six months after leaving Southend, they gave me a call asking like, what my plans, etc. Elaborate, uh, what's the LFE? The League Football Education. It's mainly for the younger, the younger players. Okay. Um, and there's every professional player a member of that? Yeah, well, it's for, for the youth team, basically. Okay. Uh, for the youth players. And then, obviously, above that is the PFA. Okay. So, um, yeah, the LFE got in touch with me, um, asking what I'm doing, etc. Um, and they actually did a piece on me when I was in America. Mm. Just asking about like how it's going and how I made that transition, mm. etc. So they 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 tried they tried to do their bit, but club nothing dead. That's mad. Nice. Well, There's similar thing that we heard from Kieran. Yeah, um, he was talking about he went to America to escape and then he didn't hear anything from the club. Like he was in a similar situation where he was like golden boy and didn't yeah. hear anything from the club, no support or anything. So it's, it's interesting to hear that these clubs kind of build these kids at the end of the day. That's what they are, but I know they view as commodity, but these are kids that have got feelings that are fragile um, and they build you up. When they release you, it seems like there's no support 
and obviously we're doing this November mini series kind of touching on mental health and football mm-hmm. and that sad news of Jeremy Winston it's like that could be anybody do you know what I mean yeah. you don't know what going on people you don't know people got smiles on their faces but when you're told you're the footballer you're the footballer you're the footballer and all of a sudden you're not the footballer it's like where do you go from there like the education is a bit bit part like mm. you've done a b-tech but you haven't done a b-tech like it's just a bit it's a bit of a mess so yeah. to hear that the clubs don't do anything or don't even follow up with you is kind of shocking to me yeah it is and it's, it needs to change mm. it definitely needs to change mm. and, and you were fortunate enough that you you got to go to america after that and we will touch on that i just wanted to check in with kojo as well and yeah. what what was your experience of of leaving west ham like yes Quite similar, like um, to what you've heard from Julian, and I think the people watched the Kieran Bowie episode. Yeah, um, it's similar to that, really. It's like my one was. Um, I remember the day I got released from West Ham. That was like under sixteens, and um, I remember I was so uh, I went out training. I could feel there was something weird though. That like, the vibe of the day was a bit like <laughs> it's just like what I was going on here today. You know what I mean? Just to train. So basically, I went out training with the boys. And whilst I was out training, they called my dad in for a meeting. So I wasn't even in the meeting. And they called my dad in and basically I was under 16s. And long story short, they were saying like, that Kojo is not going to get a scholarship. But like, where the relationship I had with the club at the time, I'd been there, what, eight years. So they said, like, they said to my, my dad, like, we are actually willing to offer Kojo a scholarship. So this is how it actually happened. They said that we're willing to offer Kojo a scholarship, but we can't guarantee him playing time. And my dad, being an African dad that he is, said, nah, like, that's, that's not going to run. That's not going to run, you know what I mean? Like, How did that conversation go if you were in the room at that time? I'm like, dad, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. well, I'll prove, I'll prove it. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah. so, so that's, that's how it happened, really. So they said, we can offer him a scholarship, but he, we can't guarantee him playing time, so it'll be weeks where he might not even be in the squad. Mm. My dad was like, nah, that's not going to run. Like, he's not willing to gamble me not being able to go to sixth form or higher education mm. to sometimes not be in the squad. He needs something a bit more concrete. He was always massive on like, you need to have some sort of, like, yeah, yeah, exactly that. So then I got in the car after the session and then that's, that's when my dad obviously told me. Obviously, that's a difficult conversation for a dad to have with a son, you know what I mean? That's mm. all I've ever known, like being at West Ham. So he's saying like, yeah, he's just trying to find the best words to say like, it's kind of done. Mm. And obviously he ain't even said it that well, so I'm there like <laughs> <laughs> African dad, I swear. It's like he said that. <laughs> I swear he was asking me questions. He was like, so like, how would you feel if they didn't offer you a contract? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> no, dad, sorry, dad. Oh, yeah, what do you mean by that? <laughs> how would you feel if they a contract? What are you telling me? <laughs> what do you mean? But, so, but obviously I'm putting two and two together because for my dad to be talking to me like that anyway yeah. that looked ordinary innit so yeah. I was like obviously I wouldn't be happy but what can I do kind of thing so I came on that kind of vibe and he was like because I think I think that's what's going to happen <laughs> 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 what? So, that was me being told that I'm done with this football thing what like that so I, then yeah <laughs> so that's how it happened and then that's poor from my stand by the way it's disappointing you're like I f- Someone like, that's been at the club for eight years and you can't even have a five, ten minutes. Yeah, like, like, you, you, like, look at faces. You used to celebrate me. When I was playing up and I was scoring a winning goal, yeah. you were, like, feeling yeah. the kid. Yeah. Now you can't even tell right now I'm not going to get a contract. Yeah, for Crazy. sure. It's a one-sided relationship, though. I remember going on tours with you, especially the Belgian tour, mm. killing it. Like, and there's clubs literally coming up to you. There and, and there. There and there, like, we'll sign you, like, Belgian teams, like, French teams, Italian teams, like, Milan, all these different teams are there. Like, trying to grab these kids, like, like trying to get agents onto you. Yeah. And the club's like, no, no, don't, don't talk to them. But as soon mm. as the club is done with you, mm. it's not like, oh, I'm going to help you find a club, and they, which they might do, mm. but they don't really, do you know what I mean? But yeah. they'll push away other offers. But, like, when it comes to them actually having to help you to take the next step, mm. like, it seems like they're very reluctant, which is, which is sad thing. to hear. So, like, I've obviously, I've made it light-hearted, but the reality of it is that, like, so I'm going to bed that night thinking, like, bro, oh, like, my life's changed, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm going to bed thinking, like, what now kind of thing? Now, like, everything I've ever known, because I've only ever known, I told you I've only played one year of exhibition football. West Ham was normal to me, like. Yeah. So other people, they might have been striving to get to that position. I was maybe in that... um I was in that position where I didn't even realise what I had. So yeah, yeah. to be when it's all taken away and then you go to bed, it's just you at night and you're thinking like, 
what now? And it's the reality of the situation. It, like, for some some kids, they might not have family or a support network around them. So they're dealing with that, if you want to call it trauma, on their own. It is trauma, 100%. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, I'm going into school the next day. Mm. And remember, as I said, if you kept up with the story, Josh, I went to school with Josh Cullen, who was the same year as me. So he was still a West Ham player. And just the nature of the way we were in school and the way I played um, in comparison to the way he played, he was really effective. He was like a keyboard player. But I was like, I'll beat my man and lick it from 30 yards and it's going <laughs> stash. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's going stash. It's going <laughs> So like, people always used to think I was the I was the one that was going to do it because that's not maybe a bit more entertaining for people who don't know mm. the game so well. So then I'm coming into school and they're asking me about West Ham. I'm like, oh, I'm not even there anymore. Do you know what I mean? And every time like you have to say that, it is difficult. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's like a painful experience to go through. But yeah. like you, um, it's a, it's a thing where like at the time as well, because you're a kid, you don't really know how to express that emotion. Mm. And I was at the stage where I didn't really, it wasn't really um something that I want to talk to my parents about just because mm. like I just it was an awkward situation. Like I didn't want to have to dive into that because yeah. when you dive into it, then it's like it's real. so yeah, it's real. So but yeah, you're, you're young, so you don't know how to deal with that. And you've got no guidance in it. Do you know what I mean? Who's yeah. guiding you and telling you that this is how you feel or this is, like, you can talk to this person, you can talk to that person? Because, as Julian said, like, um, I got a call from the under-16s manager, like, maybe three weeks after I got released, just saying, like, how am I doing? So, like, it was it was an effort or an attempt to kind of no, make contact. No. But, it, it, like, he asked how am I doing? I said, I'm doing okay. He said, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you might as well not call, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's just like, it's like, rah. As soon as you're done, you're done. You're done. You're done. Like, there's no turning back. There's no one's going to help you. Mm. Like, people, um, again, I, I don't know what, what happened in that meeting, but like, I, I didn't, never got offered the exit trials where, for anyone who doesn't know, exit trials are just where all the release players before scholarship go to like a, um, a massive like almost like a tournament it's just to release players scouts come there and just pick who they want mm. pick who they want so I didn't even get off of that do yeah. you know what I mean yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was I was out here on my own so I'm thinking I'm still in the mindset of I thought I was going to be a scholar I thought I was going to be playing full time football next year mm. so I'm thinking alright cool what can I do to make that happen this is a 15 16 year old boy trying to make a route in the game now like yeah, on, yeah. on like my own path mm. um, so Again, um, I, I can't remember how it came about, but I managed to get um, contact with Crystal Palace and Fulham. Did you have an agent at this time? No, I didn't have an agent. So I didn't even have an agent. So it's me and my dad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Dad that I've told you about. Jamie knows dad. Like, he's not going to be actively... Actively, like, yeah. finding that. So <laughs> we've managed to sort out Palace and Fulham. They're having me. But after a couple of journeys down there, my dad's not really, he, he doesn't know how this is going to go. He's like, he, I think he, the way I think he saw it is like, he didn't want me to be chasing, chasing, chasing this thing and not get anything at the end. He thought that could be more traumatic almost. So yeah, I had that experience. And then I went down to Stoke. Um, I've done well down at Stoke. That's the thing. So I've done well down there. I scored. They wanted me to come back. But again, I don't think my dad was trying to do that three hour, four hour journey. Do you know what I mean? So it was a thing where like I was kind of losing hope. Well, it was a thing where it's like, yeah. oh, I don't know where this is going to go. Yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, I've gone from thinking, yeah, next year I'm full time, I'm going to focus on this dream. So like, like you, I would never say, I, I would never say I was depressed, but it gets to the point where it's like, this is mentally draining. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. football on its own is mentally draining. So trying to battle a, being released and trying to find a new club yeah. on your own. At 15, 16, you're 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you're young, man. You're, 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 you're looking at yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So it's difficult. So Cause that's the thing. You're not. It's not even like you're whipping and you've got a car. You can drive to place. It's like you have to get the permission or your parents <laughs> are going to have to drive you down. Yeah. Use their petrol to drive you down. So yeah. the decision is, all those people in West Ham to not have you in the room, I do understand why they go to the parents because it's like they're the ones who are going to have to do everything for you. But, it's just, it's just the case that it's like, like you say, mentally draining for 50, 16 years to be out there by themselves. That's the thing. So, but yeah, so um, from there, like my dad, like my parents have always, as you, all of you know, my parents have always been massive on this education thing. Because like, yeah. they feel like football is 
it's not in your hands enough. There's so many opinions. If one gaffer don't like you, then that's you done. Mm. So they always like, you need, you need, you need to have like education behind you. So my dad, like in his ideal world, I would be doing like sixth form, so do my A levels as well as playing football because he knew I loved to do that. And that opportunity came about with South End. So they offered me a chance to do my A levels with my um, a local sixth form. Mm. And then um, also like play for Southland Academy, so for the youth team, which I guess was an ideal situation for my for my dad. Yeah. That's it. For me personally, I would obviously have been more committed to the football because I felt doing that that fifty fifty split, I was always fifty fifty percent behind mm. in whatever. If yeah. that's school one, if that's like sixth form, like I did, I never went to an economics lesson because mm. my economics was my football days. Yeah. I had that like, days off. For, um, sixth form for football um, only so like I never went to economics like mm-hmm. how I done what I done in economics yeah. Lord knows like, this family's got an interesting relationship with economics oh, no I didn't know it was economics you don't even touch on that you don't even touch on that and there's also the exams and that but like yeah what, what like you did like you say took away from the football and it took away from mm-hmm. school as well yeah. so to manage to get through that and go get the, uh, get like your A-levels and whatnot mm-hmm. I sure Richard, you would like, yeah, so that, that's that's the thing. So like, like I, I always I always say like that. So as you said, you're doing the mental health thing at the moment. So yeah. people won't realize what the kids are going through when they get released. Like mm-hmm. you really won't realize because a lot of the times they don't even have someone to talk to, or they might not feel. Especially the kind of industry football is like footballers aren't programmed to talk about their emotions and things like that. Like it's that's not that's not seen. That's almost seen as a weakness sometimes. So kids sometimes are just trying to. They deal with it themselves. Like, I, I felt like I was doing that myself, trying to just deal with it myself. You got to act strong because that's just how it is. Like, mm. but yeah, so I think it's so important that the clubs do have some sort of aftercare plan where if a kid's released, they do try and in some way help that kid find their next path. It's not, it doesn't have to be football. The kid might not want to do football anymore, but at least have some sort of guidance or give them the opportunities or materials or resources to go and see what they want to do. Mm. Because otherwise, th- th- there's a lot of kids that go, sh- like, go straight, like, as you were saying, this, the story that you just mentioned, it's, like, it's, like, it's a sad story, but it can yeah. really happen because these kids are losing everything that they ever knew. Yeah. But yeah, so that's, um, that's, that's what happened with, with my situation and then mm. I ended up doing the sixth form of football. So, yeah. Yeah. at least I, that, I saw that as a way out. Like, I, I was lucky to, to have that. Yeah, yeah. And again, that that just shines a light on the supportive network that you had around you, mm-hmm. and you know now, looking back on that, you know you're you're benefiting as a result of you know, you know putting education and having a family that did actually put education because otherwise there's you know who knows what 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 you'd be doing now. You, yeah. you you might you might have gone back to education like after you finished football, but yeah. it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It really shines a light, and it's 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 important for us to you know try and get this kind of message out because after speaking to Kieran last week and after speaking to you guys now, the aftercare that these clubs have is minimal, and it almost seems to me from the outside, it's like these these clubs were almost exploiting kids from the age of like. You it's know, hard to say. Yeah, but it's, it's hard. hard. You've got to think they're, they're almost exploiting kids from the age of like you were eight, you were, <laughs> you were eleven, twelve. They're actively turning down bills. You know, like opportunities for you. You're going on tour, getting off offers from you know clubs in other countries, mm-hmm. and they're actively turning these down. And then as soon as the switch turns, they switch turn, and the aftercare is minimal. Yeah. To me, that's the next that's exploitation. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it just shows like it's like legalized. Ex- well, I've said that three times. Yeah. Legalized exploitation, but it just shines a light on how football is a business now. And yeah, like you yeah. should shine a light on the you know like the clubs selling players here and there. They're, yeah. they're the, the politics involved where they're playing younger players to get a move here and market there. value do you know what I mean it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy and yeah. these kids are like 15, 16 you know like it's mad it's lit and it's like, but the thing is that the way you're reacting to it like I feel like I'm very much because you're my your cousin, my cousin you're my brother like I'm, I've grown up with it I've understood but from your point of view like the way you look at the way you should explain it out like it's a madness bro like <laughs> it's, it's a true madness like you're, the way you're explaining it is making me think that this is crazy yeah. and the mad thing is it's like so I've like I've known these guys my entire life. Like, like, like we alluded to, me and Quaker met at Ashley, we were like eight years old. Like, soccer schools were from time. Mm-hmm. I knew 
like when you guys were dropped from these like from these clubs, I didn't understand the politics of that age. You know, no, I, yeah. I was young. You know, yeah. I was a young kid. Like I didn't understand the importance of mental health. And it's only yeah. like we're in twenty twenty now, and it's starting like people are really starting to shine a light and talk more about these things. Yeah. But you know, I didn't even understand that that you know yeah. the kind of things you guys went through and the fact that you went through it at such a, like young formative age. Mm. And the clubs just like minimal and like had picking up the phone three minutes saying how you doing. Mm. You know, like. It's not enough. <laughs> it's not, right, it's not enough. enough. Like it's that's not enough. that's nothing. Like it's something needs to be done. And like the one thing I would say is like these. This was a few years ago. So you'd like to think that like I I would be very interested to see if if like Premier League clubs have what, implemented yeah if Premier League clubs have actually implemented any sort of structure because mm. you know what this was like what was like about six years ago for yourself and yeah yeah that's all right, right. Yeah, yeah yeah and for yourself oh, but for me. Nine years ago now? Nine years ago. So it's not that long, you know. I'd be very interested, like, and I think me and Craig need to go away and get some research done and yeah. look into this, because if there's not, then... You shut up. Bro, we've got to shine some lights. Yeah, and send some sure. emails and fucking yeah. yeah. ruffle some fucking feathers. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. Like, that's, that's a justified cause. We know people, various people throughout this month, we're lucky enough to be within circles where we can actually talk to people who have played with different clubs and had different experiences. And it's just, it, like I say, it's, it's quite stark when you hear people who've been inside that actually elocute it and explain it. it's just like right this shit is mental and obviously like i don't know how it is but within like african culture there's a reluctance to talk about mental health do you know what i mean there is that there is that and like you were going you guys are going through it and whatever way you're going through it you can say like maybe you weren't depressed you're going through whatever you're going through and it's important that there's a support system from not only the club but from families as well and yeah. to make sure that the kids are all right because that like Jeremy Whiston again come from life come back, bro. We don't know what happened to him. Like the parents probably didn't even know that he was going through it. You know, we couldn't even verbalize it. It's just that at the moment it was done and it was gone, and that now he's gone. So uh, it's important to kind of shine light on that. But maybe like on a more kind of positive note, um, obviously your your experience at Southend was what it was, and you got released. But then you took a different route to what a lot of people take, and maybe it's a bit more common now. You went to a Went to university in America, went to enjoy enjoy life in California, got the Phillips and shirt on now. Yeah. Um track to the top. Yeah. Like so explain what like how that route came about and your experiences in America. Um so yeah, so after the whole Derby thing didn't work out and you know, um I ended up leaving my agent because, you know, it felt with him like he felt that he had taken me as far as I could go, mm. kind of thing. And I I I don't wanna I don't wanna like bad mouth him or whatever, but the relationship that we had, I felt like he was more committed to the club yeah. than to me. Mm-hmm. Um because obviously they were gonna they're feeding him players, right? So I don't know. So once the club was done with me, it felt like he was done with me as well. Yeah. So, you know, I just wanted to cut ties completely and just do something new. So the opportunity to go to America came about. I don't even remember how it came about, to be honest. Um, but it wasn't something that I was really thinking about um, in terms of, like, when all the offers were coming in, I was like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't, like, looking into it too deep. Um, and then it came to the week before I was meant to go out, uh, and I was like, nah. I don't know if I can do this. Really? Yeah, honestly. The week before, I was like, nah, I don't know if I can do this. Someone got in contact with me saying, oh, you can go, come out to Germany and play football if you want. There's a club here that can, can take you on. And I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down, I'm down, I'm do it. And my mum and my dad were like, nope, you've committed now. Like, it's been six, seven months work, work talks. Yeah. Um, the coach is out there. Mm. You know, you're going. Mm. So I went, and uh, honestly, I am so glad I went. Well, best decision you have made. I, best I, I remember that period of time when you were in America. Now. I'm in Brighton, you know. Obviously, I'm loving life in Brighton. Yeah. I see, I see your Instagram pictures in, in California. <laughs> I'm like, yo, you are living like in the sun, playing football, whatnot. Like you, yeah. Like I say, great decision. Yeah. I'm it's crazy. Really it's crazy you say that, especially to interrupt you, but it's, when you say like again, you might have just been a victim of being a little bit too early there because you look at the amount of young English players that are going to Germany nowadays. Mm. The amount like because they met like. There's tons. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? And like, they're, they're, they're playing regular football out there and some of them will come back and some of them are staying out there, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's the point crazy. to be fair. Like, there are, the, the routes now are different. Like, bare, bare young English players, like you say, are going to Germany. There's some in Spain as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah like, yeah. maybe came a little bit 
soon, too soon. Yeah, yeah, too soon for you, man. But yeah, in terms of Fullerton, in terms of life in LA, <laughs> what was that saying? Obviously, obviously, you want to keep it kind of PG for the kids. Yeah, of course, but, yeah. Um, Frat parties and what? I've seen some. I've seen some Snapchats. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's what it is. Isn't it? You've seen it. Um, on, on the football side of things, though, um, I was I was quite surprised. Yeah. With actually how good the standard was. Mm. Um, I didn't know, didn't really know anything about the team I was gonna that I was going to. Um, I knew they were Division One, which is obviously the best division you can play in America. Yeah. Um. And it was in a good conference as well, the Big West. Um, uh, there's teams in there that get the highest attendance in the country yeah. uh, for their games. Um, and, you know, they play football. Like, we, we had a, a lovely stadium, a uh, 10,000 seat stadium. The surface was just yeah. crisp, you know, perfect. Like, um, and, you know, we tried to play football the right way. Um, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, we, I got to go all over America playing games. Um, the, the tough part of it was mixing it with school because yeah. obviously you're you're pursuing a degree at the same time. Um, so there'll be times where we miss three, four days of school because we're in the other side of the country. Um, and you know I might miss a midterm or um, just crucial uh, uh, lectures that are important to have the outcome of you know my grade for that semester. Mm. Um, so it was tough, like trying to balance that. Yeah. But um, somehow, only Lord knows how, but I got through it, yeah. you know, and got a degree um, in communications, advertising, and, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy I've done what I've done, yeah. you know. Um, what I do now, um, I'm in the advertising field, mm. you know, using that degree, and that wouldn't have been possible if I didn't go to America. Yeah, so obviously, like, with us being fans of other sports that are not only football, but, like, uh, NFL and NBA, obviously the college system in America... Is very much like there's a synergy between education and professional sport. Like you can't have one without the other. You have to go through college right now, anyway. You have to go through college to get to the professional level, whether it be in basketball, or football, or soccer. So, what would your like? What's your viewpoints on that? And do you reckon a system like that would work in the UK? Uh, just to interrupt on that as well, there are a lot of. Uh, so again, I, when I was at university in this country, for example, I played basketball at a decent level. So there was there was a lot. Of, a lot of American players that weren't good enough to make the league, like would play like D one basketball, for example, and yeah. they they would look to come to the UK to do scholarships and stuff over over here. Oh, there is a step down, so yeah, there is yeah. there is like snapshots of that, yeah, but not at the same level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, that's yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I have mixed mixed feelings about it. Um, I think it's good what they're doing in America, having to have the educational part of things um, in order to, to play. Um, they have rules in place like uh, your, G, your GPA has to be above a 2.5. Mm. If your GPA is not above a 2.5, you can't play, mm. basically. Um, so they make sure that you have that kind of backup plan, you know. Um, and and all the athletes, they, they have to take that route, you know, yeah. because you need that in order to um, participate in the draft. Mm-hmm. to go to the MLS draft and do a draft whatever it is um, I know they're, they're now finding different ways where I can cut that short yeah, um, yeah. but um, yeah it's important out there and you know parents my mum and my dad loved the idea of that yeah, 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 yeah. still playing at a higher standard yeah. um, but you know make sure I'm getting a degree out of it my, my, our dad fucking loves it like obviously like you know from the inside the NCAA are like a, a corrupt organisation at its core in terms of oh, yeah. profiting off like players likeness and the players not getting paid a penny for that okay. but from the surface level from parents point of view that don't really understand systems like what you get like a free education the education that normally costs you like a hundred grand you get for yeah. free and then you get to play sport and then you get a degree as well like yeah. like on the, on the surface it looks amazing but I'm just not too sure how much that would translate they will bring that over to the UK. I, yeah, I don't think it could work here. I mean, yeah. the system that is in place now with academy clubs um, and how they push the players through, if you start bringing education into it, yeah. I just, I just I'm not sure. I don't even think the players themselves, like the, young, the youngsters, would be about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a different mentality. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and you kind of, you, you see it um, reflected in the national team, right? Yeah. So, the English national team, obviously, footballers, yeah. you know, um, who haven't had to worry about the education side, 
because they've only had football to focus on. Mm-hmm. That's all that's on their mind, training, etc. But with the American team, obviously they're not at the standard of the European countries. Mm-hmm. With, uh, yeah. The country, the size of America is huge. I think California is the size of England. Yeah. They should be producing players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I mean, know? to be fair, they are starting. They're, to, they're like, starting to players. now. Yeah, 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 they're starting to now. But, but I feel um, like there's a focus on there should just be. Exactly. Should be. Especially if you. Yeah. Maybe a force if they did. If they yeah. cared about it, just a little bit. They really <laughs> showed some, you know, yeah. a little bit of intent. Like yeah, they yeah, could yeah. really do something. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. you know, they've got their system and their beliefs. Oh, they yeah. believe in the educational side of things. So, mm. you know, fair play to them. But again, they've got quite a few young ballers in like uh, Canada and. You know, so there's got quite a few, yeah. few young ballers in Germany as well yeah. now. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of them yeah, like, come yeah. over to Europe. You know, um, even Jack Harrison. So he, he actually yeah. played D1 football. He was, I think when I was a senior, he was a freshman. At, he was a freshman at Wake Forest, I think. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, he got drafted. I think it was a number one pick. And obviously, we've seen how his career has gone. So yeah, it, it can now, work. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was on loan, I think, from City. Yeah, 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 yeah. City yeah. Obviously, Koji, your experience was very different. So touched on going to the South End after things were done at West Ham. Yeah. You were there for a couple of years as a scholar. Mm-hmm. Um, when things wrapped up at South End, well, what, what did you look to do? Obviously, you talked about getting your A-levels. How did things pan out for you after uh, after your time at South End and United? So I think after South End, um, I kind of was like a bit disengaged from football. I kind of felt like um, I needed some sort of some sort of break from the intense schedule of like full time football or like academy football. So like um, I had the opportunity to go to university, like where I'd done my A levels. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? That's making sense to me. Like I'll play football at a decent level and I'll still be able to like get like a degree out of it. Yeah. Similar to what Julian would have done. That's what how I thought it. Like I, I think I thought the level of uni football would be better than it was in yeah. all honesty. So yeah, I took that route. So I went and like, looked around unis and decided on Portsmouth. But then when I when I got to Portsmouth and like obviously um you have induction and then you do the football trials, I realised like uni football is like quite a bit off of a cap like I'd only ever played Academy, so I it was quite a high standard that I was gonna be comparing it to yeah. and I couldn't believe it like I was like this is not what I expected at all like yeah. in terms of the standard was a lot lower than I'd hoped for so it was it was a thing where at that point football became more of a secondary kind of option in terms of career so um yeah that that's, that was my choice once I went to uni I thought you know what let me focus on my degree done a degree in business and then just thought like how can I make that work going forward? But I always say, like, me and Julian, we're, like, I wouldn't say we're anomalies, but we're, like, um, we're lucky to have the opportunities that we had to go to uni. Like, there's so many so many people you could be having this conversation with that have had a similar path to ourselves who haven't had the opportunity to go to university. So they've got to try and work around that, basically. With the options they've got, it might be a lot more limited than say, for example, what me and Julian have been able to do. So yeah. that that's where it's like you, you always wish that those those kids do have some sort of guidance or they are told when they're um, developing that they might not be a professional footballer, so you might need to have a plan B, as we were saying earlier. Yeah, so, even, even if the club was to push education more, just yeah, so that exactly. you know, there is a fail-safe option for these young players. Mm. Right. I yeah. mean, you know, so like... Um, in the youth team, you have to do a BTEC, yeah. right, in sports. That BTEC is the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I, like, I, I, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I probably did, I didn't do half the work. <laughs> I did do half the work. <laughs> it gets like that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, Wait, so that, the BTEC qualifications, was that enough to get you to America? No, no, no. I had to take my SATs. Well, Luckily, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit bright. Where, yeah. <laughs> no, I tell him again. <laughs> I'm a little bit bright. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> where um, I, I've got a good SAT as well. So. Okay, okay, okay. Now, see, that's that's just... it's Yeah, like I said, you're anomalies because a lot of people go through the system where, they, the way they're not brainwashed and they believe football's the deal and the end all. When that shit hits the fan and it's not the reality... Like, you're left with nothing. Because like I said, the beat I don't know how serious they take this. Like, I don't want to discredit something that might be serious, but from my understanding of it, it's something that's not taken that seriously. It's like, we do this on the side, we're going to kick ball, we're going to mm. kick ball. And it's like, 
when you get released at like a later age, maybe you're lucky when you get, if you get released a bit younger, then you're lucky, you can go and do other things, but if you get released at like 16, 17, 18, like you're in real trouble. Unless you've got a strong foundation and family support, you're gonna be you're gonna be in the mud. So it's kind of it's obviously I know your stories, but it's obviously good to hear your stories about mm. how you're successful and how you kind of uh, managed to forge a path for yourself after football. And that's kind of what, what I want to touch on now in terms of what you're doing right now as a career. So June, I'll start off with you. What what what's uh, your degree taking you on to in terms of career path? Yeah, so um, right now I work in the city. I work for a media agency. Mm. Um, one of the best uh, around in, in the world today um, in uh, paid social advertising, um, yeah. you know, and without the degree, probably wouldn't get that job. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or, or learn the, the basic fundamentals of advertising. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to, you know, and the, the whole process that I went through with America. I mean, even prior to getting to America, like the, the ugly side of it, Getting released from South End, not continuing playing football in the UK, etc. But I would I change it? Yeah. Probably not. Like yeah. because of where I am today and the experiences that I've had. You know. So that's good to hear. You don't have any regrets about what you did. No, no at all. What you've done. Um, tell me, you're killing as well. What you're doing. So. So I think that's kind of an important part to highlight as well, life after football. Yeah, we need to hear mum about paid sponsorship. Yeah, I know, for sure. We're going to be home for another hour after this, yes. and we're going to find out about how to get our shit popping on Instagram and whatnot. Yeah. But um, I suppose the same question for you, Kojo. You know, how did the degree help you in terms of the current career you're doing at the moment? Yeah, so mine's, mine's like similar to you, June, just like directly linked to it. So I'm, I work in the car industry, yeah. like in management, and yeah. I've done a business management degree. So that is literally directly influenced what I do as a career now so it's like as I said I'm, I'm just lucky to be in that situation where I was able to enjoy football at a high level whilst playing um sorry whilst um, studying so yeah like as I said yeah that is, that's yeah. it really yeah yeah and I know not much more to add to that uh, I think I think the one thing that I want to know and I think it's important as we have alluded to numerous times there are a lot of young guys that could potentially watch this and might not make it in a game of football the one thing I want to know is what's the what's one of the main things that you learned in football that has translated very well into the working world? Um, I'll go for it. Yeah, go on, you go. Yeah, for me it's like discipline and like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me it's discipline. Yeah. Like I was what I was like twelve, coming home on my own on the bone. Um, like get we used to get a bus home. Yeah. Come home, I have to make myself a toasty. Yeah, yeah, I've got yeah. like half an hour turnaround time, and then I'm off to football. I've got to do that because that's just my schedule. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I've learned to like make the most of my time, just like be so efficient with my time, and that's helped me in everything. So it's just like, and also, even like when you go to the nitty gritty of actually playing the football, like, um, as I said, that we're standing, they expected high standards consistently, and that's something that's translated into my life. Like, I expect that of myself. So and I f- and I do feel that's come from football, where yeah. it's like I know what the standard is, so I need to be meeting that consistently. Yeah. So I feel feel like that came from football, and yeah, just the, the discipline and kind of motivation to always. I feel like I'm always trying to prove a point, which came from football again, where where it's such a competitive nature, like you compete with your friends, you right. always chip on your shoulder. Chip right? on your shoulder. You've got to prove you're the guy yeah, that well. you think you are. So like I feel like that's what helped me. Like that's what I've put into my everyday life and that's what will take me take me on to better things that, that I've learned from football. And probably going throughout the, the, the academy I'm, I'm assuming it, it would have instilled like a, a constant work ethic for you guys oh, as well. Yeah. Like the yeah, amount of that. like the amount of time you're dedicating as a young person to yeah. football. Do you know yeah, I mean it's, you touched on it uh, briefly about the competitive nature of it. So every like every season you're getting trialists coming in, right? You want your spot. Yeah. So from a young age, you're always having to step mm. it up a little bit, you know, um, to prove that you're the guy, like, you're not getting let go. That's I true. remember so many players trying to come for my spot. Bro, <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, 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 you stay there, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the like, you're not coming for this my is spot. You have, you have a new guy in step over there. Like, what? Bro, 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 chill, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put a happy chill, like, uh, yeah. So yeah. that side of things, you know, it, it translates well to, to what we do, what I do today, you know, just making sure that I'm always on, on top of my game. Yeah. Know, making sure 
that I'm always putting my best foot forward and trying to, uh, you know, make that next step, promotion, whatever, or whatever it is. Um, so that's like, obviously we've been, we've been chatting for a while and we'll wrap it up soon enough. But it's amazing to kind of hear like the success story of it. And obviously we're talking about the mental health side of football and we want to highlight that. But also good to hear like two brothers who, who've been through the system, have been at different levels of it, you going to America, you going to uni England, and like get, actually getting something out of it and be positive in what you do now day to day in your nine to five job. So that's always, that's always amazing to hear. And it's, I suppose to kind of round up, we're, we're, we're glad that you kind of jumped on this. Um, we've, we've tried to get this in the books for a, for a couple of, a couple of weeks, but it's just been a nightmare just to be. Yeah, this is actually the second time recording this as well. Like, <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The TV <laughs> issues of doing the podcast the first time was, uh, yeah, the, the footage was cropped. <laughs> so I so have to do it again. So I obviously greatly appreciate it and how candid you've been as well. Um, we'll make sure to bleep out the names that uh, we don't want to be mentioned. But, um, oh, you can say the coaches, I don't care about it. Yeah, the coaches, <laughs> <don't care> about <laughs> it. the players or whatnot. Um, yeah, and obviously, guys, thank you for listening. It's, uh, it's been a bit of a longer one. You know where to find us um, on Instagram, it's We Talk Football Podcast. On Twitter, it's WTF Podcast 90. Make sure you follow us on all platforms to find out more about the insights of uh, people. Fuck that up. Fuck that up. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. Like, comment, and subscribe.